Now, we're going to jump over. We're going to catch the book of Deuteronomy. And this book of Deuteronomy is going to be a very interesting book. The book of Deuteronomy is ending the Pentateuch, the Torah, the five books of Moses. Deuteronomy is the, the last book. Deuteronomy is a covenant renewal. What's a covenant renewal? God comes to Abraham and makes a covenant with him and says, I, Abraham, you believed in me. I will give you the land. I will give you the seed. Your seed will multiply as the stars of heaven, and you will be a blessing to all the nations on the, on the earth. Is that covenant of Abraham reiterated to Isaac and to Jacob? That's called covenant renewal, when it passes down from one generation to the next. Now, in Deuteronomy, have you got a generational passing between Moses and what? Is Moses going to be up in Mount Nebo here? Is he going to, overlooking Jericho, Moses can't go into the promised land. God's going to show Moses all the land. Moses can't cross the Jordan River. He's going to die on Mount Nebo. God's going to bury him and take care of him and stuff like that. Moses, um, so what happens? Moses has got to give up the power. Who does he give the power to? Joshua. So the book of Deuteronomy is this passing of the baton from Moses to Joshua. And now Moses is going to say, Joshua, here's what's coming in the future. This is what the land's going to be like for you. I can't go over there. Man, I wish I could go over there. But Joshua, you are going to take the, the next generation across. You are going to take the next generation across. And so this is going to be a covenant renewal. By the way, you'll get the same type of thing with Elijah and Elisha. You know what I'm saying? You get two prophets, uh, kind of like the mentor and the mentee. Um, you get that kind of thing going down. So Joshua uh, will be getting this and stuff. Now, facing change. I want to look first at the book of Deuteronomy in kind of a, almost an existential way here about its bigger meaning and things. And what you've got is, so far in the Pentateuch, coming from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, we've seen God's promise, that God promises, 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 he promises to Abraham. He promises to Isaac. He promises to Jacob. He promises to Moses. But do Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, do they possess? No. Abraham possessed what? Abraham possessed one piece of property out of the whole promised land here. You guys are Israel. Abraham possessed one piece of property. What was that? The cave of Machpelah, where he buried Sarah, his wife. The only thing he ever owned in Israel was the place that he buried, the tomb that he buried his wife in. You can go to, by the way, to this day, you can go to Hebron and uh, go to the cave of Machpelah. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, last time I was there, this is, this is the honest truth, half hour before we were there, two women were shot dead. Okay, it's not a real good place to go, especially when you don't know what you're doing. But, uh, but it is the cave of Machpelah. It's, it's a very famous place, but it's very dangerous today. Testing versus resting. The Israelites were in the wilderness. The wilderness was a time of what? The wilderness was a time of testing. No water, no food, no leadership, they said. No, no meat to eat. And so God tested them in the wilderness for 40 years. Now when they go into the promised land, is their testing going to be over? The testing is going to be over, and God says he's going to give them. When they get into the land, they're going to experience Shabbat. They're going to experience rest. And so going into the promised land, Deuteronomy looks at this land and says, man, we've been tested in the wilderness for 40 years. You guys are going in, and you're going to find rest. And that's going to be wonderful for you guys. You guys are going to not just get the promises. You're going to possess what has been promised to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. You're going to get to possess it. Transientness versus permanence. Transientness versus permanence. Um, you guys are college students. Transient or permanent? Actually, I look at some of you, probably permanent. Uh, but anyways, wouldn't that sound almost like purgatory? Be trapped in college like for the rest of your life? Wouldn't it be like, be like Groundhog's Day? You know, it's terrible. Anyways, okay. Actually, if you want to get trapped in college for like the rest of your life, you know what you do? You become a professor. You become a professor, and that's what I did. The honest truth is, the honest truth is, after you guys, you know, college, all this work and stuff like that, the honest truth, this is some of the best days of your life. I know it sounds really weird. But your college days, these are some of the best days of your life. You look back on and say, man, you know, I, I know it sounds really weird now, but, but uh, you'll miss these days. Transient versus permanent. Have you guys ever been, have you ever traveled and traveled and traveled and, and 
this summer, my son just got back from Afghanistan, okay? And we drove to, out to see his brother. We drove the car 33 hours out to Denver, Colorado. And we got done Denver, we went up to Yellowstone, through Idaho, and all this stuff. We couldn't even get a potato in Idaho. How sick is that? Anyway, so we, were, we drove back through South Dakota, through Minnesota, Wisconsin, saw you know Uncle David and things. Now, he's been traveling in Afghanistan, 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 getting shot at almost every day he was there. He comes back to America. We go on this trip across country, <laughs> traveling stuff. At a certain point, did he just transient, or did he just want to be home? Instead of sleeping in a foxhole, did he want to sleep in his own bed? Is that a big deal? That was a big deal. So we, we hit Wisconsin, and he says, you know, Dan, I'm just tired of traveling. He says, I, I just want to go home. Let's go home. So we drove for like 26 hours straight. It was, I don't recommend that, but if you have multiple people, we switched off, and he's Red Bull King. So anyways, uh, permanence. Okay. What I'm saying is, do you ever have that where you travel, 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 and you just long for a place where you can settle and be permanent? and the things aren't always in, in transition and things. And so Israel is in the wilderness, they're what? In the wilderness, they're wandering in the wilderness, transient, transient, transient. Moses said the transience is gonna be over, you guys are gonna settle, you're gonna have your own property, you're gonna have your own property, you're gonna have your own houses, you're gonna be able to settle in the land and settle down and be permanent there and you're, raise your families, that kind of thing. Now, there's a guy named Walter Brueggemann who's written a book on the land, and I've stolen these concepts out of him, but I think they're really important. Brueggemann talks about space. Now, what is space? Space is like chaos. Space is like chaos. Um, a, a phrase that I love is what I call the WUD theory. Okay, you know what WUD is? W-U-D, -W WUD, the world upside down. Have any of you ever experienced that where the world feels like everything is upside down, everything's, everything's crazy, what should be right is wrong and what's wrong is right, everything, the world's upside down, okay? The world upside down, that's space, chaos, transientness, space. It's where you don't belong. You travel through space, you travel through space, but you don't belong there. You travel through space, but you don't belong there. This is space, okay? Uh, the wilderness, the wilderness, probably that's the best way to say it. The wilderness is space. It's a place of hardship. There's no food, there's no water, there's not enough sustenance and things. It's space, it's chaos. You move from space into place. Place, if I were to pick one or two words, one word would be home. Home. Do you guys have, some of you have a sense of home? Home, belonging? Belonging is a thing. Home is where you can be what? Home is a place, can I be myself at home? And everybody knows me as I am, weird as all get out, but by the way, are they all weird too? We're all weird together. We know that everybody's weird at ease, and, but we're family, but we're family, and we're home. We belong there, you belong there. Have you ever been in environments where you felt you didn't belong? And that, that's, that's space. But at home, you can relax. You can be yourself for who you are. They know who you are. You don't have to say who you are. They know who you are. They know you. You know them, and it's okay. You're all weird, okay? And you're kind of in this thing together, okay? And so that place, that sense of home. My, my son-in-law, um, who married my daughter, that's why he's my son-in-law, um, he's, he's got a birthday coming up in January. He's going to be 41. Can you believe this? I can't believe it. Anyway, so uh, he's quite a bit older than my daughter is, but he's just, uh, he's very, he's a really neat guy. But he, uh, he came from Taiwan over to America, and uh, his family, um, how should I say, his family's been broken up, and his family's all in California and things, and they're really far away, and the family's been broken, father, mother, and things like that. And he just longs for what? He's, he realizes now he's midlife and stuff, and he, he's got friends. He's got more friends than you can believe. I mean, you guys got Facebook. This guy's got more friends than you can believe in Facebook, okay? This guy has tons of friends. But he has a sense that, what, these are all friends. Do friends come and go? Friends come and go and stuff. And he's realizing, you know, I want family. But he says, my family's in California, and they're all broken up and stuff like that. And so he's been, kind of been adopted into our family, so he's part of our family now. And our family's very, very cohesive and stuff. And he feels like he's a member of our family. Is he a member? Well, he married in. Yeah, he is. So anyways, so he is part of our family. So when we do things, we do things kind of like our kids all can hardly wait to get together right now. Actually, my two sons are out shooting elk. <laughs> anyways, um, 
Denver and things uh, together and stuff. I'm sorry, they shot Bambi or they haven't shot Bambi yet, so it's okay. And, and the way they shoot, well, actually, I shouldn't say that. My son's an expert marksman, but anyways, they haven't seen any yet to get anything. But Okay, but what I'm saying is the sense of home, the sense of belonging, the sense of can you rest at home? Can you rest at home? You can rest, you can relax, you can be yourself. So that's the difference between space and place. This is the wilderness. This is the promised land. When they go in to the promised land, they enter place. This is where they belong. And now they can find a home here. They aren't wandering anymore. Wandering is gone. Now they can, they can set up permanent place and stuff. So this is, 